Interesting article from the News and Observer over in North Carolina. This is a, this is a tricky one. North Carolina's FOIAs, right? Obviously, a lot of people put in FOIA requests after USC and UCLA joined the Big Ten because they wanted to know exactly what was going on inside different athletic departments as this happened. But North Carolina, uh, all of their stuff was finally released to the News and Observer, and it shows all the details into a college athletic department uh, after USC and UCLA announced they were going to the Big Ten. We're going to pull it up on the screen here. Uh, Andrew Carter is the reporter on this one, and there's a lot of interesting stuff as far as the text messages from Bubba Cunningham, the AD, and Kevin uh, Gushwitz, I hope I say that right, the university chancellor there, uh, as the news began to spread of another round of major conference realignment. You know, they scheduled a meeting, they're going through all this. Uh, It does show that Bubba Cunningham had a talk with Jim Delaney, of course, the former Big Ten commissioner, about what exactly was happening. Um... And it does say, uh, let's see, that Delaney told him, or that Delaney preached patience and planning, no need to rush right now. Which Delaney obviously had to be involved in all this. Right now, he's a consultant for the Rose Bowl, but I also believe that he knows exactly what's happening in the Big Ten at all times. At all times. So uh, you roll through some of this, and uh, of course, it goes into navigating a period of transition and. Etc. Etc. You scroll on down, um, and you get to a very interesting section here, where it says patience and planning. It says for UNC and other ACC schools, there's little choice then but to follow the advice Delaney provided Cunningham in their long talk over the summer. Patience and planning. Uh, it says that uh, Phillips was likely to address the AAC, or ACC's presidents and chancellors during their conference call the next morning. One of the talking points, as Cunningham described it. Should we explore a partnership with the Big 12 or the Pac-12? Now, we did talk on this show multiple times about the idea of the ACC and the Pac-12 maybe merging together, at least the remaining members of the Pac-12. They even had a name for it. They said uh, we could have a super conference both athletically and academically, probably would need to be called the Atlantic Pacific Athletic Conference, which would be APAC. Uh, Maybe that's crazy, but if it would get us a better TV deal... It may be worth considering. And so Cunningham, of course, wrote back, we need to think about what outcomes we want. What are our priorities? Do we want to maintain all teams in the ACC? That's interesting. Uh, is this a new league? Do we want to have the same number of teams at each school? It says, should we play a national schedule or a regional schedule? Uh, these are all interesting. Interesting points. Now, obviously, you had to know that some of this stuff was going on. Um, because... Any Everything is up in the air whenever something like this happens because you don't want to get completely left behind, but everybody in the ACC also understands that their grant of rights goes for another 14 years. They are locked in unless they get eight teams to decide that they do not like this current contract. That's it. That's all they got. You, you have to get... And I don't believe that realignment would benefit eight of the 14 members uh, at all. So why on earth would they do this? Uh, do this Now, if you were to join with the Pac-12, that could be interesting, right? You could find a way to make that work. And then, of course, you drop off some of the dead weight. Uh, you create a whole new super conference. You don't maybe take all of the Pac-12 teams. You don't take all the ACC teams. You find a way to do that. But at the same time, then you have to find eight teams in the ACC that are willing to drop that. So do you bring six or eight from the Pac-12, and only eight from the ACC? If something like that were to happen, you could have a 16-team conference that is on both coasts, and you're leaving out what? Syracuse, Purdue, not Purdue, uh, excuse me, Syracuse, Boston College. uh, I mean, I don't even know who you wouldn't take, right? That's where it gets tricky, because they want this to be academic and athletic. So... That's something to pay attention to because that's something that they brought up here. Uh, Really, really interesting. Like, do we want to maintain all teams in the ACC? Like, that's that's where it gets tricky. I I can't wait to see if there's more that ends up coming out of this. If the ACC finds a way to get out of their current deal with ESPN, their current grant of rights, uh, do some of those schools want to leave? That's... 
that FOIA request was was massive. Very, very big. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.